Nicola Sturgeon faces a growing SNP rebellion over her handling of the Alex Salmond inquiry, with the former First Minister due to give evidence to the Holyrood Committee later today. Former Scottish First Minister Alex Salmond will give long-awaited evidence to a Holyrood inquiry this afternoon. The former SNP leader is expected to expand on his claims Ms Sturgeon repeatedly broke the ministerial code in her handling of sexual harassment complaints against him. Mr. Salmond also alleges the current First Minister misled Parliament. She strongly denies both claims. Mr. Salmond is due to appear in person at 12.30 p.m., where he will be quizzed by the Holyrood Committee investigating the Scottish Government's handling of the sexual assault claims against him today. The former First Minister, who led the 2014 Scottish Leave campaign, is expected to push his claim there was a malicious and concerted effort among senior Scottish government and SNP officials to damage his reputation. He is also set to expand on his allegations against Ms Sturgeon, as she has said Mr Salmond has an obligation to present evidence. Ms Sturgeon is due to give her own evidence on Wednesday, but the SNP leader faces a growing uprising from within her own party, as many criticize her handling of the Salmond inquiry. Jim Sillers, a former deputy leader of SNP, is leading the charge against the First Minister. He has lodged a formal complaint against Ms Sturgeon for comments made in a press briefing on Wednesday, where she claimed Mr Salmon's conduct towards women, rather than the conspiracy he has alleged, were the root of claims against him. She added that just because he had been cleared of criminality, that doesn't mean that the behavior, women, complained of didn't happen. Mr Sillers, a former MP and long-standing critic of Ms Sturgeon, said that he was astounded by the comments, which, so egregiously questioned the verdict of a jury. He said, those were weasel words employed by the First Minister, and any reasonable person would draw more than an inference from them that the jury was wrong. I have been in public life for over 60 years, Ondine the course of it studied how heads of state and governments in the democracies have behaved in office. I cannot recall one single incident when the head of a government so egregiously questioned the verdict of a jury, or thought it a proper and legitimate discharge of their duty to do so.